Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks. Founded in 2003, Microsoft Imagine Cup is the tech giant's student innovation and technology competition. It basically provides an opportunity for young developers to go out there and build business models, create applications and even get technical support to turn their scientific fiction into fact. Hello and welcome to this edition of CNBC TV 18's Young Turks. We're coming to you from the Emerald City of Seattle. My name is Megha Vishwanath and here's what we've lined up for you on the show today. This year, 49 teams from 33 countries were competing for the ultimate world champion title at the 16th Imagine Cup. The teams mainly focused on top three areas, artificial intelligence, big data and mixed reality. While the judges were hunting for the cream of the crop, they decided to hand out special awards or mentions from each of these categories and here's a look at their stories. Uh, hi, I'm Vidan Saran. I'm uh, working with Team Pengram and we're a team from UC Berkeley, California. Remote collaboration is really hard, especially in industrial settings when you're doing repairs, when you're doing operations, when you're doing troubleshooting on these complicated pieces of machinery like power plants and oil rigs and, and engines. Um, it's, it's complicated and the cost of errors are really, really high. So the idea is if you can teleport some expert into your space holographically, they can guide you through this process and it's um, a lot lower cost than flying someone in on a plane. We're working with HTC in China. They have vocational schools where they're training students to work in uh, situations like this. And we're trying to get Pengram deployed there uh, so their students can learn more seamlessly on how to operate these kinds of complicated machineries. We're also working with a company in Europe on energy grids and how this can be applied to help uh, remote troubleshooting on errors in energy grids. One of the, the cool parts about Pengram is the hardware is completely cross-platform. We've architected it so it works equally well with Microsoft solutions, whether that's the HoloLens or their Windows Mixed Reality headsets. It also works with Steam VR and HTC's Vive and, uh, and Vive Focus headsets, um, as well as uh, mobile tablets and Oculus Rift. I'm Pratik Mahapatra. I'm from RV College of Engineering. We are working on a solution to detect counterfeit drugs, and the application name is DrugSafe. DrugSafe is a solution to detect counterfeit drugs. So around 40% of the drugs sold in India are counterfeit. So we wanted to come up with a solution that will help the uh, consumer detect counterfeit drugs as soon as possible. So this process usually takes up to 10 to 15 days if you go forward and actually send the drug to the pharmacy store, right, to the manufacturing company. So we thought that why not come up with a solution that will take entirely 10 to 15 seconds. For example, you want to um, you know, transport insulin, right? Insulin should be transported at a certain temperature and a certain pressure. So insulin is transported from place A to place B and we can track the real-time data, right? With like pressure, sensor and temperature and all of that and magnetometer, accelerometer, all of this data is given to you in real-time using the Azure IoT port. The next thing that we do is drug safe consumer. So for the consumer, he can go to any chemist store, he can take a picture of the back of the medicine and he can verify if the drug is counterfeit or not. People haven't thought about this because of the fact that uh, to get the database of the medicines is pretty hard to be really honest. When we also spoke to drug companies, they said that they won't get the data that easily, right? But when we presented our solution to them, when they saw the merits of our solution, that's when they realized that, okay, there is potential in this, right? In fact, uh, the markets out there uh, think, because it's a $217 billion industry issue. So they said that, okay, we want to eradicate this from the root cause. I'm Ida Rizal, I represent Team Sochware from Nepal. The project that we have come up here with is eAgrovet. So eAgrovet is a machine learning inbuilt mobile platform that helps farmers to identify plant diseases, get like very suitable, convenient mitigating method for all those problems, and we connect them with experts, uh, connect them with other farmers, and give environmental factor analysis on the basis of which they can bring out best possible crop. Basically, we come from a uh, land of agriculture, like Nepal is a land where we have Himalayan regions, hilly regions, and Tarai regions, like there's variation of environment. Now, there are 
uh, the most of the population in our country were involved in agriculture and there lies a problem like people still have been following the traditional methods for this we have planned uh, we are currently talking with Nepal Agriculture Research Council and looking out ways how we can actually get to the real farmers so they would be taking this application and helping farmers to that to do that out Speaking of AI or artificial intelligence, this year at Microsoft Imagine Cup, many student teams use this technology and deep learning to focus on real, non-glamorous problems by proposing solutions that were affordable and low cost. So I decided to catch up with Dave Forstrom, Senior Director of Communication at Microsoft's headquarters in Redmond to find out more about the company's work in this space. Here's a slice of that conversation. The idea with AI is that there's a world around us, a world that's where, you know, Sacha has recently said that yeah. the, the world is a computer. Yeah. And the whole notion of all these devices and smart connected machines around us is how do we give them life? Okay. How do we cognify this world around us? And that's what AI is doing. So artificial intelligence is definitely not a concept that's new to tech giants like Microsoft, right? But we're seeing that being democratized over the past few years. We're at Microsoft Imagine Cup and so many students are using this at university level to build concept, to build ideas. Uh, so let me A first ask you what Microsoft is doing to A, democratize everything that AI can do. And overall, you know, what's your sense on, on what's the way forward from here? We did that with the benefits of computing mm. over the last several decades and took the power of computing into every home and in, onto every, every desktop. And that's how we see the potential. That was Bill Gates' vision that's of was, what you can Bill do Gates with the computer. vision of the computer, yeah. but, but not many people recognize that he had a vision that was much bigger than that. Yeah. It was this world where computers could see and hear and talk and understand just like we do as human beings. And so that's the vision, the mission that we have today is how do you take those similar benefits of the computer, but now with AI mm -hmm. and make it available and accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a, a few companies that can actually pull those strings and make that technology available. But it's actually how do we enable a platform yeah. so that everyone has tools and services and infrastructure to use and to build upon. Machines becoming more and more like human. It triggers a man versus machine debate. Mm -hmm. How do you sum it up? Yeah, I think it's interesting, right? Uh, you could go do a Bing or a Google search today, yeah. and that's the first thing you're going to see when you see images come back. Mm. It's going to be dominated by robots, by machines, this cyber feel to it. But at the end of the day, we're optimists. Hmm. You know, we really believe that this new era of AI is about hmm. people. Hmm. It's a people first world and that AI is technology that's gonna enable us to amplify our ingenuity as humans yeah. so that we can really be stood up as the heroes and not victims. Not a man versus machine world, but a world where we can take the, the emotive capabilities and capacity that we have as humans. Okay, talking of AI deployment, one of the most interesting projects that Microsoft's been working on and I don't know how many people know of this because when you talk about bots or when you talk about uh, you know assistance or intelligent assistance, you think of companies like Google because of Google Assistant. You think of the Amazon thanks to the Alexa. But there is so much more that you guys are doing. Talk to us about this family of six uh, smart bots that you guys have invented, including uh, one in India called Ru. Uh, but talk to us about the use case, especially in China. It's very interesting. Yeah, you know, one of the big things that we see with AI and advances that we're seeing is the this whole notion of conversational AI. Right. We really believe it's the next platform of computing, this idea of conversational So computing. when you say conversational, it's different from what an Alexa or a Google Assistant does, right? Well, no, it's actually, we see what Google and Alexa and Cortana do is the same thing in terms of intelligent personal assistance, mm -hmm. but the whole idea of conversational AI is so much bigger than that. So, so if, if you, you think, can draw us some yeah, parallels. So if you think about this spectrum, this continuum of, of conversational AI, you know, on one end of it, you have things like intelligent personal assistance. Mm. Mm. Their whole focus, their whole mission is really about task completion. It's this notion of, you know, it's a command interface. Right? Okay. So Play as a user, song, I give a tell command. Me the weather. Ah, okay. That's right. Okay. So, you know, so, and it's almost walkie talkie type, right? Okay. Do this, wait, get something back, okay? But the idea of conversation, the way that we talk as humans, yeah. is it's interactive and it's full circle and we anticipate what each other might say and we might interrupt each other. And, that's this whole other side of the spectrum of conversational AI, which is much more EQ or emotionally intelligent driven. And so we've developed these social chat bots. Right. The first one was Xiaowice in China back in 2014. Right. And Xiaowice has now over 200 million users in, in China. Uh, Xiaowice carries conversations with people that on an average last 30 minutes long. So okay. it's not a quick two or three turn conversation, play me this or do that. 
Shawis is actually relating with you about your world, much like you and I would talk as friends. Okay, so uh, I believe this is now, at least in China, being housed uh, on all Xiaomi devices. And on Xiaomi Elite devices, yes. Okay, so now again, you know, we spoke about AI and we spoke about now chatbots, and you said how this is different from a command-based conversation, but what's the what is the use case beyond just talking to people, beyond just being another app on your phone? So Xiaois is actually now being used by news organizations. Xiaois is actually <laughs> you know, complimenting everything that everyone does and amplifying that ingenuity. But Just yes. when we were talking uh -huh. about man against machine, you're t saying that news organizations are using it. I hope they're not hosting a show, <laughs> are they? Shawice does a lot of things. You know, Shawice will host the weather or uh, talk about the weather. We'll actually interact with the, the the regular hosts about the weather. Comment on the Olympics, sort of using her predictive analytics. Uh, Shawice has written poetry, has an acclaimed book of poetry in, in China. Produced the first AI song, is soon producing the first AI album. Has done children's books, audio books that have been played by more than four million hours. And and specifically for India, what are some of the plans that Microsoft has lined up? You know, for India, you know, and I think, you know, one of the things that we saw with uh, this, for instance, the Imagine Cup here with the, yeah. the students is, you know, one of the things that, that's really big, big industry in India is farming. Mm. And one of the things that we've done out of our AI for Good initiative is this program called Farm Beats, where we're actually able to use the AI technology to advance crop yields, mm. really understanding, you know, temperatures, soil moistures, pH levels, and how you can use AI from a predictive perspective to actually enhance crop yields. I believe you're also doing something for the weaving industry. We are. We are, we are, you know, we, next to farming, you know, weaving, you know, we understand is the second largest industry in, in India. Yeah. And handloom weaving specifically is actually something that we've seen actually start to become more of a dying art form and, and practice in India. So, you know, we had some in, in brilliant, you know, innovative engineers that thought, is there something that we can do with the chatbot technology that can help to start to revive this practice in India? We actually, you know, targeted the, the Telangana community in, in India, mm. and working with that industry as well as you know nonprofits, Chaitanya Bharati there in, in India, um, we've actually been able to, to provide resources, but actually use this chatbot, teach the chatbot all kinds mm. of background information on handloom weaving, so that she can then further educate this rising generation. Right. And the, we took it further. We decided, you know, can we actually teach the chatbot to teach them how to modernize in terms of art, artwork, and, and practice? So the chatbot's coming up with more innovative. Yeah, and ideas. so you know, this next generation of, of handloom weavers is actually able to engage with the chatbot, nice. be educated on the practice of, right. of handloom weaving, and then actually contemporize the artwork in beautiful you know, you know, practices and arrays. And we've seen it really start to take off. Welcome back. You're watching our special edition of Young Techs from Microsoft Student Competition Imagine Cup 2018. From 49 teams, it was down to three, and the world champion walked away with a cash plus a Jor credit prize of $100,000 and also got a chance to win a mentoring session with the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. Let's take you straight to the world championship and here's a look at all the action. Please welcome Satya Nadella. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's fantastic uh, to be here uh, at Imagine Cup. It's one of my favorite uh, events of the year to come have a chance, uh, see the young developers from all over the world, uh, their high ambition. The impact that we're going to have is based on the choices that you as developers are making. And in fact, we got to see a glimpse of it, right? Some of the deep learning uh, that all the three finalists were using to essentially synthesize knowledge and augment human capabilities was a choice uh, that was made in terms of how we can, in fact, help people, the health outcomes, education outcomes, small businesses around the world, which are the lifeblood uh, of our economies, can become more productive. How can public sector and public services become more efficient? Uh, thinking of the broader society and the broader economy and the impact of digital technology is what really you all are showing us the way and it's fantastic to see this. And implementing these problem-solving philosophies are the top three finalists and here's a look at their pitches. Now just try to take a moment to imagine what it would be like to be missing an arm or a hand 
and interact with the world. It's impossible to even imagine what that would be like. However, if you have the chance to talk to an amputee, you'll get a, just a brief glimpse into what that perspective is like. And so we talked to Annalisa. She's a, a friend from back home in Toronto, and she's a congenital amputee. So she gave us an outlook on the prosthetics industry and, and gave us a real big problem that's going on. So on one hand, you're going to have these cosmetic uh, prosthetics that don't have any functionality, but are really there just for show. On the other hand, you're going to have these really expensive robotic bionic arms. And so it's not really available to most of the population. And so we think we found a perfect solution for this, and that's SmartArm. So over the past couple of months, we've been meticulously engineering a solution. And in doing so, we've leveraged several Microsoft Azure technologies, computer vision, machine learning, and cloud computing. Let me show you how it works. So it all starts right here in the palm of the hand with the camera. Now, let's say I want to pick up these keys, for example. No problem. I take the camera, and I make sure that it's pointing towards the keys so that it can see the keys. Now, there's an onboard computer which processes this image and identifies the object and figures out the most appropriate grip to pick up the keys with. The moment you see an object isn't necessarily the moment you want to interact with it. So it's actually waiting for a cue from this muscle sensor I'm wearing right over here. You see, SmartArm learns the exact way in which you operate it so that when you get a new device, you can upload the data from the old one and download it right back onto the new one. of millions of parents all around the world as babies cry to express their needs. Letting your baby cry it out can affect negatively its physiology as the prompt response to its cry is essential for the infant's healthy development. Nevertheless, parents report that recognizing their baby's needs is one of the greatest challenges they have to face. And that's why we created I Cry to Talk. I Cry to Talk is a real-time baby cry translator to image, voice, text, and sign language. The parent records the cry, which is securely uploaded on Azure Cloud. We use a cry detection system to identify if a sound recorded is indeed a cry. Then we extract some features to be used as input for our machine learning and deep learning classification algorithms. Within a few seconds, the result of the translation is on the screen of the user's phone. Our system supports the inclusion of behavioral data for a personalized approach. Our deep learning models mimic the process occurring within the parent's brain as it gets trained to recognize their baby's needs in a hierarchy of layers. But I Cry to Talk is more than just an app. It's a holistic system based on inclusivity as we support cry translation using sign language for hearing impaired parents. I Cry to Talk is committed in working to understand those who matter the most. A common misconception is that all people with hearing loss can't hear anything. But actually, many of them struggle to focus on specific sounds of voices. Here is our solution to this problem. MIDI TDR. Hear what you want to hear. MIDI TDR has three main features. First, it's highly robust. Using deep learning, it can extract any voice from a mixed audio cells containing various noises and sounds. Secondly, it's very fast. It takes just 0.06 seconds to process one second of audio. This enables users to communicate in real time. Finally, it's affordable. There is no expensive equipment involved. All you need is a smartphone and a pair of earphones. Since we use Azure, running cost is, at, is minimal. Time to see who emerged as the champion of Microsoft Imagine Cup 2018. And the winner! of the 2018 Imagine Cup World Championship is from Canada, SmartArm! All right, the wait is finally over, and we have with us the world champion of Imagine Cup 2018, Team Canada. Congratulations, guys. Uh, very interesting pitch and very interesting idea that you had. But let's talk about what inspired you guys to get into the robotic prosthetic um, space. Right. Um, the first time we actually built a prototype, um, it was out of our own like passion and you know our own <laughs> understanding. So quickly we realized that you know this actually may not be what 
someone actually wants. Right. There may be features that are here that are not necessary or features that are necessary that aren't on here. So that's when we really started to look outside of our circles and try and uh, find someone who we could, you know, uh, get feedback from. Okay. So so that's what sort of pushed us off and got us going in the right direction. But let me ask you at this point, uh, what you've built here right now, mm -hmm. a prosthetic robotic arm, the idea itself is not disruptive. I mean, we've right. seen such products, we've, we've, we've seen mm -hmm. even big tech giants right. trying to get into this space. So what makes you guys different? What did you uh, set out thinking that, hey, you know what, these are the products that are available, this is what needs to be different and this is what we're going to build. So the biggest factor was that we were realizing that there was actually this big accessibility uh, issue within the market of prosthetics. And so the biggest thing that we were leveraging was, one of the things was 3D printing to make it much more cost effective. The other thing was actually using computer vision and machine learning. It took away from the fact that all the other big robotic, those tech giants, they're relying on all these really complicated myoelectric sensors. It's all manual input that's still from coming from the amputee. Yeah. Whereas this is semi-autonomous, and so it's actually much more easy to scale. The arm is actually learning along with the, the user. And so by having it kind of more uh, autonomous, it's much cheaper to do. Less than $100, did I get that uh, right from your pitch? Yeah, yes. so the prototype costs less than $100, and when we get to market, our goal is to make a prosthetic with all this functionality, less than 500. With that, it's a wrap on this special edition of CNBC TV 18's Young Turks from Seattle. Tell us what you thought of our show. You can write into us, youngturks at nw18.com or tweet us at CNBC Young Turks. That's our Twitter handle. And we at the team love hearing from you. Till next week, from all of us here, goodbye and many thanks for watching. Celebrating 16 years of Young Turks.